Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon on this wonderful Monday. It's always nice to see you. Any Monday I'm here, I'm happy to be here. So you know that I'm always happy when I, I'm back again. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to first uh, thank you for being here. Thank our replay viewers for coming on because replay viewers, you have a very uh, important part with this show because you come on and you watch the replays and you make comments and they're always welcome. I'd like to also thank our sponsors for today's show. Today's show is sponsored by First Book Academy, and they are the sponsors for the book fair in Moreno Valley that's coming on October 2nd. Those of you that, are, if you're interested in attending, it's from 10 to 2 at Crossword Church in Moreno Valley. You can go, you can call if you have any information. If you need any information, area code 619 here. Let me do this really quickly. I'll put this in the chat for you. Um, that way you can, for the book fair. Also, there is, if those of you that are doing any traveling, you go to First Friday's Travel and you can book your um, travel insurance. The reason you want travel insurance is because, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I don't talk about this much, but I'm just going to tell you this quick story of the travel insurance. I think I mentioned before, but we've been on two, not just one trip, two trips. One, the lady called us the day before she she was going. Or there was an Alaskan cruise. We were on that trip and she did not make it, but she had travel insurance. She received every penny of her money back. And the other was a gentleman that did not have travel insurance. And unfortunately, he passed away on the trip. So here we are on a trip out of the country. And the, un unfortunately, the gentleman loses his life. But now the family has to spend $10,000 to bring him back when the travel insurance would have maybe cost maybe $150 for travel insurance, and it would have taken care of all those expenses. Travel insurance, in my opinion, is just like any other insurance. You want to have it, whether you need it or you don't, it's just good to have. It's a good feeling to know if anything happens, I'm taken care of. And that's what travel insurance is there for. So that's really, in, you know, really good to have for those of you that um, are traveling. And I want to go over that with you. And the last but not least is if you are um, looking to text, text those of you that have you either are in business or you belong to a school or corporation or you need to, let's say you need to reach, it could be 50 people all at once instead of keep having to send messages through your phone. There is a texting system. This one that I use um, pretty regularly has been really, really good. You can call the uh, 619 number, 619, which I did not put in there for you. Here you go. Area code 619-669-8603. And you call that number and you can find about the texting system. It's very reasonable. It's just like for you get a thousand text messages for less than $50 a month. So I just that's my that's the last sponsor for the show. It's for texting. All righty, all righty, all righty. Now to our guest, ladies and gentlemen. This, our guest, her name is Adi, um, Adiola Davies. And I don't want to say her last name. I'm going to let her pronounce it for you because I don't want to say it wrong. She was born and raised in Lagos, Nigeria, and began painting at an early age. As a self taught artist, she is known for her ability to create joy, love, and positive outlook in her artwork. When you take a look at my art, you instantly feel the joy and happiness the colors convey. Her work is both in, is in both private and public collections. Adiola's work has been used in many TV and movie productions. She works in various mediums from paint, emeraldist, and metalist. I'd like to introduce you this uh, today, ladies and gentlemen, this wonderful, wonderful artist, Adiola. Are you there, Adiola? <laughs> Hi, how are I you? Love, you <laughs> and I didn't even read it. Hi, oh, she said hi. That's Lavinia. She was at, at the school district with hi, Lavinia. <laughs> yeah, hi, hi, sir. <laughs> I tell you, and then it's and this is Elaine. I think Elaine's here too. Elaine hey, said, Hey, my sons <laughs> are in the house. Yeah, Elaine, Elaine you're thank you, Elaine. PDK. Hello, Mary and Adio. I'm here and excited to hear this broadcast today. Love you both, my sisters. Hi. It is so anytime. And I tell you, you jumped on, Adiola, the energy with this came with you. 
Oh, and yeah. I'm going to put Lavinia's up. Lavinia, hi. Yeah, hi, Lavinia. I just wanted to definitely welcome you because for a lot of reasons, I can tell you. I um because I look at art and I and I first of all let me do this. Why don't you tell us about how you became or, or came into the reality that you were an artist? How did you get there? Because I'm looking at all your your different things. How did you get oh, there? It's, it's 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 long story. I mean, ever since I could remember, I've always loved doing things with my hands, making things. Growing up. You know, I grew up in Lagos, and uh, one of the things during the time that I grew up is if you wanted to be an artist, uh, you pretty much kept that to yourself because the first thing, and it's not really that the parents or, or your family is really against it, because in, in, in that situation, in that surrounding, uh, mm -hmm. being an artist is not a, a very uh, solid likelihood of making a living and sustaining mm -hmm. you. So it's never really encouraged to have the other expression that says, ah, I will not look for you. That's like, <laughs> no, no, no. I will not means like artists in, in, in uh -huh. and, and it's like, no, uh, we want you to be in the professions of lawyers, doctors, engineers, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. It's what's encouraged uh, for you to go into. So right. over times, I've just, just do things on the side and playing and stuff. And so when I uh, migrated to uh, U.S., the opportunity came when I was in um, college uh, that I, as I was studying, I was also uh, taking classes of interest just for me, I guess, in a way to kind of uh, fuel that passion and also to um, learn as much as I can. So I would always take things, you know, how you said you work hard, play hard or, you mm -hmm. know, that kind of thing. So I, right. I, I walk out and getting that, but I also feel that my aspect of being uh, playful or uh, releasing stress is to take those art classes for my own enjoyment. No. And I, you know, and I did that um, uh -huh. every opportunity and stuff. And then, okay. you know, finishing college and then uh, it dropped in my lap opportunity where we end up having to own an art gallery in Inland Empire. Uh, we went to two different locations. And, you know, the, the passion for the arts continued as I was promoting other artists and, you know, showcasing their work and selling right. their work out of us, uh, out of our, um, Tedell's gallery in San Bernardino and in Rialto. Uh, I was also, uh, you know, uh, continue to take classes, continue to polish my uh, skills and learn more as much as I can. I dabble in different media and things like that. Uh, anything that interests me, I just get straight into it and uh, take workshops, took classes at the college, took a uh, one-on-one -on -one workshop with uh, different artists that I admire. Yeah, right. so, and that got me to where I am today. Oh, <laughs> now you, but you had before, I mean, so before you actually took classes, you had a, there was a desire in your heart anyway. Yes, yes. Before, yes. You, before that class ever existed, you were still, were you painting? Were you sculpturing? What were you doing? Uh, I was, uh, you know, uh, if I remember clearly, being young, painting and things like that, it's not readily available, but we have, uh, one of the things I remember was, you know, how we, they cook and, uh, and it's open here cooking uh, in the mm -hmm. backyard, you know, with the, it's not like the stove with the gas and all that. Right. And, and then when you cook, uh, you put um, the uh, charcoal from it. It's a, you know, we have charcoal pencil. Uh -huh. well, you can draw with that. Those those are the primary things, you know, when you make something out of nothing. Right. You know, so I would take some of those charcoal remnant from the wood burning fire and stuff and try to use it because really getting at supplies like paints and acrylic and things, those were not readily available. And, and mind you, at that age, it's like, oh, you're just playing, you know, because a lot of kids, yeah. uh, my time in that time, we get to play a lot outside i mean that's not as common nowadays right um uh, where you pretty much in front of a computer uh to uh, to really play the, for mm -hmm. the younger ones but for us back in the days okay uh it's going outside to to uh to play and i will grab any kind of paper that i see and i will use some of those charcoal from the uh uh the the uh, you know leftover from the wood burning that was used to and to make markings okay. and and draw on paper or draw in the um on the sidewalk 
and things like that. Those were some uh -huh. of the ways of me expressing my artistic, uh, you know, interests at that time. And you know, what hi, you Abby. <laughs> I'm sitting. I'm right, I, and I was just gonna say we need to go with all these names are rolling right. <laughs> and thank you, everyone. You making comments? Thank you, thank you. Um, Ard Scholar said hello. So proud of you, Aunt Abby. Is that that's okay? Then we have uh, Lavina. She wanted to make sure she said hi to you too. She said, <laughs> I and then we have Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Good to see you. And then there we're going on down. We have Maria. Hi, Maria. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> and then, I, I remember, uh, our, our USC people. I, here they come. I'm telling yeah. you. You know, they. I, this is a good example. And those of you, um, I didn't put that up yet. Um, you can get on our email list and texting system. And I'll put those up for you. If you're not already, you should be receiving an email about before every show. It goes out a week before. The text message goes out the day before. So if you like to get a text message, you just send up uh, your information to the short code is 474747. And you put show and your name will be added to the texting system and you'll get a text message. It goes out the Sunday before the show. And I try to make really, really, either I send it or somebody from the team, we really try to stick to that because we like to remind people. We used to do it the day of and people was, would tell me that was too short of a notice. They needed more notice than that. So now we go the Sunday before the show and you get a text that has who's gonna be on the show. So I'm, in, I'm listening to you, um, Adiola, because I write and I'm, but, I, you know, but I'm always, I'm always fascinated by artists because of the fact that you, that you're bringing something forth out of nothing. Out yeah. Of, that you is. Know, you're an mm. artist also, as a writer, you're an artist because yeah. the art comes in different forms. You know, if we have from mm -hmm. visual artists to performing artists yeah. and also to uh, authors and writers and things like that. Those are all different uh, forms of um uh, Art that's out mm -hmm. there. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, once once kind of discover your passion, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's easy to go after it because even if, like the roads can go winding or it can go straight. Right. So some of us it's a winding road to get right. to where we are. Some of us is pretty much straightforward. Uh, I was one of those that kind of went the winding road, mm -hmm. and I always truly believe that that's my uh, God's. Uh, uh, statement or calling for me that it does, wasn't meant to be straight road. So mm -hmm. I never really look back and say, oh, I wish all these years I've been more like a pro, uh, professional artist full time uh, right. than where I am uh, today. So, well, yeah. Um, so you, you know, we're all artists. It's different um, for everybody, you know, and you say that we're all artists. Some people would disagree because I've heard people say, well, I don't know, you know, I don't have, I don't see they don't see where they're an artist. They don't see that in, they don't, they're not a writer or they're not, you know, they're, they, they're not a painter, but I think in the way that they, we do things is, is artistry. Yes. You know, a lot of uh, content, a lot of things nowadays is very artistic. And even the people that um, not necessarily, they, they, or they perceive themselves not being artists, but they are. Right. And, and, and uh, things that they put together, the structures of how you put things when you look at, uh, even on social media, the, how things are put together. It yes. takes a, a, an artistic mind to do that. And that person might say, well, I'm not an artist. You know, you could also be an artisan. An artisan is someone that does more on the crafty side. And so, and those are fine crafts as right. much as regular crafts. And say, oh, and, you know, I'm an hobbyist. Well, you know, you can elevate your hobby, you know, to being fine you know, uh, right. artisan or a mm -hmm. uh, uh, fine artist. So people always have that and say, oh, I can't draw. You know, I mean, some of us have blessed with the talent, you know, like you have a genius. Uh, the other day I saw a 13 year old that was at the college going to be an engineer. And, you know, he has a gift naturally because he was reading at the age one and doing um, multiplication at age three. Oh. And, and it, but then there are other people in there that are engineer as well that he said, these people is afraid because they're much better, but they were not like him mm -hmm. and didn't have the opportunity and they have to really foster and develop their interest in being an engineer. Same thing is so different from being an artist. Right. That right. some of us have to really learn the skills right. and, and the techniques and stuff like right. that. 
And some people, they're born with it. They just wake up one day and they just, you know, they're like, wow, you drew that? And you, how, how old are you? You only two years old? Who taught yeah. you that? You know, it's yeah. just pain. Yeah, it's something with playing the piano. So, yes. uh, so the mm -hmm. different art forms of how we develop it. So people that says, I can only draw a stick figure. If you really wanted to be an artist and you're interested in being, um, you know, a painter, uh -huh. uh, then I strongly uh, recommend that you take classes and you're going to find out that that stick figure eventually will evolve and really, you know, blossom into a real figurative, but you right. have to, you know, uh, um, do the task. You have to do, do the work mm -hmm. to get there and, right. and stuff because we all start somewhere. And I agree with you a thousand percent on that. I am actually working on my very first screenplay and I am so, I'm, I'm nervous because I think, oh, this isn't good. But then I realize it's not good. I tell, I'm not trying to say that negatively. I'm saying I have to learn, it's a craft. I have to learn it. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I have, I, it's not something I'm born with or anything like that but I'm interested enough in it to learn it, yes. to take the classes and learn how to do it. Yes. But we're gonna go, go back, we have, you have some fans here. Hi, <laughs> Susan, Susan says, hi, yes. I'm here with Mary. <laughs> I have your paintings hanging in my house and they have been hung in there, we say been hung in my, in all three of my houses. Good for you. Yeah. I'm so happy for you both. Oh, thank you, Susan. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> thank you. And, and congratulations on your retirement. <laughs> all right. All right. And then we have Gwendolyn. This is my cousin. Hi, Gwen. Hi. I'm going to tell you, there's no show without Gwen. I just want you to know that. Gwen says, hi, ladies. Welcome out, Adiola. Hi, beautiful. Gwen. <laughs> she said you're beautiful. That is so sweet. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And next we have here, we have Maria Rango said, your sister Fawcett says hello. Okay. 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 So yeah, that's thank you. you. Uh -huh. And then we I have Richard. You. Richard says, hi. Hi, Richard. <laughs> oh, How hi, you doing, Richard. Richard? <laughs> the next we have uh, here. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Um, La Ladidi or Lade? Lade. 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 She said, hello, big sis. Okay. Um, Hi. Hi, Lade. <laughs> and Rango, uh, Maria, she said, Maria says, hello, your sister. Oh, I already said that one. And then this one says, Maria says, hello. Hi. Okay. Hi. And this is Oliver. This is, hi. Hi, babe. He said, hi, babe. Hi. Big Welcome, Adiola. Thank you, Oliver. <laughs> I want to make sure because I always want to. If you leave a comment, I want to make sure we have a chance to call you out, let you know. We I appreciate all the comments. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Thank you guys. Well, I'm a, it's I'm always a, good when you know people are watching. You know, it does. I've done live, in, uh, you know, live on Instagram and live mm -hmm. on Facebook, and then it's it 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 pumps you up when you see people are showing like you have one or two people watching. Then you're going. Okay, I'm just talking to the whoever is out there. No one's <laughs> listening to me. You know, it, no. it's, it gets real, you know, nervous, you know. But when you I see know. a name popped up or someone's watching, it kind of calm you down. Like, okay, at least I have one audience or two audience, you know. It really, it makes a difference, ladies and gentlemen. I know you guys may not know what it means to us because we're sitting here. And like she said, we don't see anybody. <laughs> But we, but knowing you're there, when you put those comments, that it does get us pumped up and know, yeah, people are out there watching and listening. So we yes. appreciate each and every one of you. We really do. Well, I, I'm going to be honest. Um, Adiola, I know you just finished. You just finished the show. Come on. Come yes. Ready. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, um, this past uh, 18 months has been very challenging uh, to all of us. All right. of us. You know. Right. Uh, when COVID came to town, we all were not expecting what, you know, it did to us as human race, you know, right. and uh, as it came to town, not just in the U.S., but uh, around the globe. Right. And as things open up, so with the vaccine, we had the opportunity to have a fighting chance against this and things started to open up and, and stuff. So I had the opportunity to have a solo show uh, this year. It's, it's ironic that last year I had a big solo show, it was my big solo show coming out from uh, uh, having uh, retired and now doing at you know, full time. And 
as soon as the show ended, the shutdown and everything happened because that show was in February in honor of Black History Month and mm -hmm. things like that. And and then everything kind of went south with right. the pandemic. Uh -huh. And so when the opportunity came again this year uh, with another gallery for me that I had a space to do a solo show, I decided to kind of focus and really uh, create a pathway for healing uh, mm. for for us as you know as uh, uh, people because when you look. Uh, to the amount of people that we've lost to the pandemic, it's just uh, enormous that sometimes it becomes numbed. You know, mm -hmm. we all becomes numb to, it, yeah. you know, becomes a number, you know, and, and stuff like that. Because uh, as human beings, we have a capacity of handling uh, so much of debt. But when it gets to a certain point, it's like people are just dropping like flies and then right. we become numb to it. So the exhibition was uh, titled Artful Remembrance, and mm. it's called uh, Grieved, Stitched, and Mended. And it's all about the process of uh, the, giving the avenue, shedding the light in having to move on uh, after losing loved ones to the pandemic. And even just losing loved ones, period, this is also very therapeutic for those, for anyone that endured any type of loss of the family members or friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the show uh, was well received. And um, it was it was uh, it was opportunity uh, for people to come in and feel touch and maybe for a minute uh, a moment mm. you know reflect and also uh, some of people we all grieve differently some people grieve right away and some mm. people uh, will push the grief yep. below and 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 keep going and and keep going like everything I'm sorry. Right. I, I need to move this painting out of the way. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> you know, that's called that's called stuffing. That's yes. called stuffing when they do uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. Yes. So so mm -hmm. you have people, you know, that go through that. And my goal was that this exhibition would help them maybe mm -hmm. open that floodgate because when it gets stuffy, mm -hmm. it's it sometimes it can be very, very uh um uh what's the right word I wanted to use? Uh challenging for that person to move on. And it can be healed. It can create some kind of ill effect in the right. human body, right. you know, because it's such an energy that you get buried and stuff inside right. that you have to open that floodgate and and really, you know, go to, to that uh, grieving process. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that we, we expect someone to grieve in a week and be done with it. Right. But, right. You know, everyone process of how long you grieve right. takes time, and right. it's for it's it's a it's a personal journey. It's mm -hmm. not a, it's not a uh, blanket, you know, Correct. one size fits mm -hmm. all journey right. and stuff. So it was well received. Uh, I mean, I was told by the uh, uh, the manager at the at the space that this is mm -hmm. one of their best exhibition they've had in that space in a long time. Uh, mm -hmm. That people coming in and really get a sense and touchy because there's a lot of uh, uh, I had a lot of quotes and a lot of things in that were embedded in the paintings uh -huh. and. Um, so here's a, one of the pieces that was in the show. Okay. And, and it's mm -hmm. a layering of art and things like that. But mm -hmm. on the behind these, you might not see that there were a lot of quotes that were in there mm -hmm. that I shared in the exhibition that people could read that this piece might, this piece have about three or so quotes about the process of healing and the losing loved ones but more on the encouraging ways and things mm. like that that are embedded, that energy right. stays with the painting. And whoever ends up with this piece is going to feel the energy of those quotes that are in there. Right. So those were some of the things um, uh, that were in. I also had some um, three-dimensional pieces where mm -hmm. it shows the stitching. Oh, I do want to show that each of these pieces, because the title of the show is Grieve, Stitch, and Mended. Each mm -hmm. one of them has a stitching on there and um, trying uh -huh. to see if we show. So uh -huh. this one was this, this one was stitched with a uh, copper wire. You know, I am uh, a metal smith, which means I make um, jewelry or work with metal. Right. And uh, working with metals, I had the things. At first, I was uh, doing the stitching. Uh -huh. and this is all hand stitch. These are all hand stitch. I was doing the stitching with embroidery uh, thread. Uh -huh. And then I thought about, you know, I wanted to uh, incorporate things that I've done or, or practices that I have used. Right. And practices that I use is using wire in my other art form. 
So I decided to uh, switch and then started to do that. And I really love the effect of the wire. It's kind of uh, uh, that strange of, mm -hmm. uh, of how, you know, uh, uh, how it's broken and you have to piece it together. Oh. You know, think of even when, when, when the people have to have a triple heart surgery and things like that, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's always that stink that, or stink, whatever they call it, that they put in there, which right. is some form of metal to try and uh, help open uh -huh. up or heal and things like that. So oh this, this, this has a lot um, of a reasoning behind it uh, uh -huh. for going that route. Yeah. Well, I can tell. No, I have a question. I know too, um, like you said, you're a, because you're a painter, yes. you're a, a metalsmith. So yes. And what's the other form? Uh, 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 as a metalsmith, I work with, I also work with enamels. Enam so, that's what it was, enamels. Yes, I work with enamels, which is a glass form. And okay. like, like the piece I'm wearing here and this other, this one here, these are all enamel, they're glass. Oh. The glass uh, that's been uh, fired onto metal and mm -hmm. then uh, fabricated uh, as a jewelry piece once it's done. Okay. Because I'm just curious. I see, it was a gentleman, I can't think, I don't know his name. He started working with, um, you probably have heard of him, I don't know, with the papers from that they wrap ladies' hair with. Oh, yeah, my, my <laughs> Blackford, yes. I, yes. Was, I, saw, I saw it on 2020. I yes. was like, well, you know, I mean, it's one of our form, foremost uh, African-American artists of today. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's our base out of Los Angeles. Right. And, you know, his history was uh, he was a uh, hairdresser and he also helped his, his uh, 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 mom, I think, own a beauty salon. And he used to right. go in there and do air and things mm -hmm. like that. And then he, when he goes to classes, I think he went to, uh, I, I don't want to know, I, I'm not sure, I can't remember correctly. I think it's at Ot Otis uh, or Pepperdine, one of those right. uh, colleges in LA. Uh -huh. and, and then, you know, uh, it started to incorporate. And that's the thing with art forms. Uh, you know, a lot of people are uh, drawn and it's okay because every art form is not for everybody. Right. Right. And and the the main thing that one has to keep is to be appreciative of all art forms. Yes. Some people yes. are drawn yes. to figurative art, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and things that are very evo evocative of strong figures in the painting. Right. Some people are drawn to abstract. Okay. Some people mm. are drawn to assemblage. Some people are drawn to um, a landscape, you know, plein air mm -hmm. paintings and things like right. that. So right. there's so many different forms of art and, and that's okay. And yeah. Mike Bradford yeah. is an abstract artist and uh -huh. he uses those things when he first started using those wrapping things as a layer. He layered and layered and layered and layered yeah. and then take away and strip away and reveal. And he also it's did something real um, when they at the, um, the riot with the Rodney King or something, I think, where he had all that street of the thing, the map, and use that and layer then and peel. And you could, if you get it really close to you could see some of the street. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a different, you know, the concept is similar to having these pieces here right. layered with the uh, collages of the, of the coats mm -hmm. that are on here in the background. They're not visible. Some right. of them, they might peep through. You might see, uh, you know, a word or two words and things like that. Right. And, and makes you curious what is the old thing. So they lay, they started, when I started the piece, I started out with the, those collages in the background and then started mm -hmm. adding uh, paints and layer the paints and marking through it to build it up. And oh. then as I do that, one of the things that's very unique about my work is my uh -huh. layering develops and where uh, there's a lot of figures and animals and things in nature that appears that was not put in there in 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 the piece when i started out with it's just mm -hmm. maybe one or two in the composition but because i do a lot of layering uh-huh uh you know i had the layers and then covered up take away kind of subtraction addition process by the time i get to finish it's like oh you know i see it. there's a there's someone standing over there or there's a there's a cat over there or there's a uh -huh. dog over there i'm <laughs> like you know it is okay for you to see those things those, I always believe the energy of whatever wants to reveal itself, mm -hmm. let it reveal. But those were not put in there. And sometimes if it works for the piece, I don't try to eliminate it. Now, if the piece that shows up does not really 
um, work with the old composition right. and things like that. So generally, those would would get covered up because it's mm. what it that's telling me is better things going to reveal as I worked on it rather than try to get okay. something that's fighting everything else. Now, when you're layering, yes, do you are you layering knowing that you're going to see this come come through, or you're uh, layering it not really? It's it's um, it's just instinctive. It that's <laughs> right. I layer intuitively reacting okay. to what's on the previous things I drive. Right. So when I look at a piece as I'm working on the, on the process, uh -huh. I look at it and then react to what's on there and add. So I'm not thinking of what's going to come up. I, I don't know what's going to, it's, it's when I'm done that people look at it and say, Oh, did you see that? Like, what was that? And then sometimes I, I might observe it myself, but <laughs> I'm a very intuitive painter. Be, uh, when mm -hmm. I do my abstract, unless I'm doing something more on the figurative side or something mm -hmm. more uh, uh, representational, right. you know. But if I'm working with my abstract and things like that, I layer and I react more intuitive uh, to the piece. And okay. it says, okay, I need to add this here. I need to put the markings here. And I put the markings and then I go ahead and add medium, and let it dry, and then come back, look at it with a fresh eye, mm -hmm. and then add more layers and keep going. To the point when I get to the point where I don't feel I needed to add anything else to it, uh -huh. I needed to make any changes, then I would consider the piece done and I would still have it rested for a few days. Mm -hmm. So that way I know for sure that it's complete and I can vanish and, and you know. You know, I'm, it, your, your process sounds so similar to what I, I do because you're letting the piece speak to you. Yes. That's what you're letting, when you set that resting period, I tell people when they write, let it just walk away from it yes. and let it, and let it breathe. Let it, it has its own energy that you yes. can't even, we can't even explain all this, but we know it's true. Yes. You, you know, you let it breathe, you let it come into its own. And mm -hmm. then that's why you, you, you walk away. You walk yes. away because if you keep on, you know, you, it's almost like you mess it up. If you keep yes. messing with it, and I have done that, I, I have done that. You know, and, and, you know, as 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 a human beings, sometimes we get impatient. Yeah. But, you know, as as I grow, and and I guess you know, age and and all that, I'm more patient, uh, and having really not the sense of urgency or rush, uh -huh. which probably sounds like it should be the opposite. Like you know, as you age, like the urgency, like you want to finish all this. But no, uh, I just look at the piece like it's not ready and I move mm -hmm. on. And maybe because I'm multidisciplinary that I work yeah. with different medium. Uh -huh. So it's easy for me to shift gear and transition yeah. to something else. Yeah. So I can come back to that. Uh, than if it was just this. And yeah. I would encourage even artists, if you're just working, uh, if you're just a painter uh, and stuff, that you should work in, and start several pieces uh, at the same time ongoing. So that when you get to that point that you need a piece to rest, then yeah. you have something it allows you without the urgency, like I really wanted to finish it, then you can transition and move to the other piece yeah. that you started out with and worked on that. And sure. meanwhile, you come back and you can look at that and then react to it and be able to. All right. We have some more comments here. Cheryl Harrison. Hi, Cheryl. Hi. <laughs> she says, hello, Mary and Adiola. Mm -hmm. And then you have Elaine. I tell you and your sword. Elaine says, Adiola, you're always a ball of energy. <laughs> she said, Mary, that <laughs> describes you too. <laughs> yeah, you know. You know what? That's who we are, Elaine. Yes. And, and you yes. know what? So Elaine's not putting her here. And so is she, by the way. He says, You're both beautiful black queens. Oh, thank you. That is okay. so sweet of yeah, you. Yeah, you know, you know, Elaine says we're, we're full of ball of energy. I have okay. yet to meet anyone with that energy that Elaine carries. Thank you. With a different, with a different, I mean, she gives so much to the different sororities. Yeah. And, 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 and it going, I mean, it's like, when I grow <laughs> up, I want to be like Elaine. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm with you too, because I was just in a meet before I come into to the show, Elaine yes. and I are in another meeting. And, yes. and Elaine is always there. Like you said, she's always giving. And we're going to have Elaine on the show. 
Elaine, oh, I don't know when, but we're gonna we have to have you on the show, Elaine. Yes. So we're gonna work that out when you can come on because you are always giving so much value to the community, so much value. So we're going to give you a hand. <laughs> That's for you. And then Cheryl Harrison, Cheryl says, oh, it says uh, spell oh, check. Oh, you missed yeah. the name. Oh, oh. Not, not iPhones. We know. That's it. We know. We, you, you're good. We charge it to your head and not your heart. We know. Yeah. And this is Charles Radney. Charles says, Hello, you're sorry you're late. Oh, that's fine, Charles. Oh, you're, you're here. You're here. So, you know, you're here, so don't worry about that. The beginning, you know, uh, afterwards. Well, let, <laughs> Thanks let me, for if I want, if I were going to start, Adiola, if I let's say, and you know, it's so interesting. My, I started a few years ago because I was, I went on this. I, I call it a journey, and yes. I didn't know I could write at the at the time. I was, I was painting, but I was like. I guess it's kind of like painting by numbers when you go to the classes and they, they show you what your painting is supposed to look like. Uh huh. I was doing that. Um, I bought the, I still have it too. I think the art supplies for my granddaughter and I, but I never, I never felt like I was an artist. I just felt like I was like painting by numbers. Yes. But, but I didn't give myself any freedom to just do whatever I wanted to do with that canvas. Yeah. I think I was afraid of messing it up. Yeah. And that's why I didn't. And now that I'm talking to you, what you're really saying is give yourself freedom. Yes, you have to give yourself freedom. And you know, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's it's a process, and sometimes mm -hmm. it takes time to yes. get to that where you can give yourself freedom. I can tell you that I never gave myself the freedom at the beginning because I was also very particular about yeah. wanting to uh, finish a piece, or if I finish a piece, and I'm like you know, fall in love with parts of it that I don't never have the freedom to say, you know, I can eliminate these yeah. or, or, or let it go and stuff. So um, it becomes where I feel like I was just keeping all these pieces and, right. and not allowing. And as I get seasoned as an artist, mm -hmm. uh, it's much easy to, uh, you know, mm -hmm. allow myself the freedom to right. do as much of interpretation I want to do right. uh, in a painting and to take things away uh, and never be afraid, yeah. you know, because we're all so afraid, like, oh my God, I walked so tirelessly for hours in that section. And and then it's like, but then every time you look at it, like, oh my God, this is not working out. You're struggling, you're pulling ears, you know, mm -hmm. it's tugging at you and things like yeah. that. And but if you just take gesso, slap it on it, you know, <laughs> freedom, you know, it's like elevating, freeing, letting go. You know, oh I mean, they tell God. us to do that, like in yoga and things like that, where you practice, you know, letting go because it frees you up. The you know the burden is not on you. That frees you up because then you're not afraid to see what would develop and. Right. What would develop would be even more astounding yeah. and magnificent than what you were trying to hang on to. Whoa, that's big right there. Because you're really saying just let go, just let go and don't and don't have any barriers or any limits or any of those things that I, I'm I'm guilty of putting on myself of mm -hmm. saying because I look at I mean like, even when I was doing the pictures from the from the artist, it was a paint and sip. When yes, I, yes, yes. And I, I love a few of those that I've taught, you know, and <laughs> I've had people comment about, oh my, it's not good. See? Oh my, it's this. See? Oh my, you know, I want it to be just like yours. Can't be just like mine. Yeah. You need to bring your own personality into the piece. See, see. And stuff, you know, because, uh, you know, we learn, you know, I take workshop with a lot of different artists that I like their work, admire their technique and things like that. I like something mm -hmm. they're doing and I wanted to do it. But once I learned the process of how they handle the material in a specific way, I find a way to give it my voice to uh, use it. I'm not interested and by, by share of my personality. Uh, I always say that I find it more challenging or, or create a difficult, difficult pathway for myself. Because mm -hmm. I fight myself very hard in trying not to replicate what I just learned from someone because 
that is not me. That's not my voice. Yeah, yeah. And, and and before the workshop is over, I mean, there are times I have to tell myself, don't start thinking of how else you're going to use this stuff. Be in the moment. Love what this person is trying to teach you. Yes, <laughs> and, yeah. and, and and take it all in. And then once you've learned what the process is, then start to think of how will this work in my practice? How will this work mm. in what I do and stuff mm. so that I don't feel like I'm being the mini, uh, you know, uh, person right. uh, of that particular uh, artist or their style of work. You uh -huh. can see similarity that someone learned because every artist learned from someone. Right. Oh, Even the one that okay. is self-taught, you know, uh -huh. if you're self-taught, you have inspirations of other artists that inspire you where, you know, you look at their work and it could be the masters. It could be, you know, uh, uh, current artists of today. But there's always someone, someone or some artists that's inspiring you right. that you like their style of work and, and you looked at it and stuff like that. And uh -huh. you want to emulate those. But what you want to do is make sure that you give it your own voice. So oh, that someone right. doesn't look at it and goes, oh, is that so so and so piece? Yeah. And then you have to like say, no, it's mine. You know? Yeah. There's a reason why they said that. <laughs> the similarity is too much. So. And, and you're right. When I very, when I very first booked it, I was accused of um, the title of the book is There's a Rocket in My Pocket. Yes. And this man actually said to me um, that I had plagiarized the book. Think about that. Wow. And when I t let him know, I said, no, I didn't. And, and this is very interesting. At the time he said it, I already knew I didn't. But at the time he said it, I said, sir, maybe you're not aware. Any book in the library can have the same title. Uh -huh. It's the content. That's that has to be different, yes. So, for instance, even with your art pieces, there will be art pieces with the same name. Yes. But yes. it's not the same art piece. No, it's not. A, a, a good one is this, you know, natural beauty. You know, that's a mm -hmm. title that you see a lot. You know, I have a natural beauty by Tolliver in my house, in my own private collection. And I have pieces that are named natural beauty. They're not the same. There's one that I did that mm -hmm. it was an older lady that won an award at the Corona uh, at association years ago, and it was it was more of the showing the wrinkling and 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 the effect and things like that of the face, right. and and call it you know natural beauty. Right, right. And, and talking about natural beauty is more of the elegance of of the of the, the, the face, very very contemporary. Right. But again, they they're not the same thing, you know. <laughs> so you can't say oh natural beauty and stuff like that like mm -hmm. you said the content the it's painting the content. And stuff. yes and that's what people need to always keep in mind it is the content we have other comments this is from elaine elaine says ah my friends i give back what god has given has given me mm -hmm. to give and that's a blessing so true. I'm st you're still a blessing elaine we're not taking yes. that away from you <laughs> you are a blessing yes so just know that and Lavinia says, let's see, Lavinia says, kudos to Mary, Elaine, and Ariola. Yes, all of you give so much of yourselves in, in all that you do. <laughs> Three energized, <laughs> energizing <laughs> buddies. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And we, I think this is what I've learned. I'm sure Ariola and Elaine has learned that we all have. It is, it is who we are. It's what it yes. is. It's not that we're giving anything. We it has to be in us to give it out. Yes. Let me say that. So that's yes. what I would say. Yes. And then Elaine has a comment here. And you guys are too funny to me. But you said, Elaine, Adiola, you are amazing with abstracts. But please speak about your jewelry and art displays, such as the art mural in White Park, Riverside, California, which asked you to produce specific parts. Okay. All right, Elaine. <laughs> That she can oh. talk on that to on that topic. Okay. okay. Uh, you know, uh, about my jewelry, um, you know, uh, like I said earlier, I am a metal smith and I also work with enamels. And I started, um, you know, metal smith fell into my lap uh, when I, years ago, when I went for a retreat, it's called um, Art Fest in the uh, state of Washington at a little, very quaint, town called Fort uh, Townsend, Fort Townsend. Mm -hmm. And we were uh, staying on, on the fort and very kind of rustic and rural, but it was a very sacred space. 
to really embrace your creativity and they had artists from all over uh the country and the world that came to teach and i took a workshop with opie uh and uh, uh linda um and uh uh and the, it was something with meru because you had all these choices to take one workshop each day mm -hmm. and i really fell in love with it and they were doing uh we did something with color cement if i remember and i said i wanted to learn so I love the metal smith part of it, like, oh, you know, this this kind of goes back to back in my days in Nigeria of playing with my hands and making things with as anything that I could find or lay my hands on. Uh huh. So th then it evolves to um, um, where uh, uh, I wanted to apply some of my color because I see myself as a colorist. Okay. And I wanted to apply the color to the medicine but not necessarily in times of stone using stones and precious uh stones and things like that mm -hmm. and that was what enameling afforded me to do because it is glass and you can then uh apply it in different colors to build up different things right and you can do it and uh, uh lamouche uh Limoges style which is more like the french like a painting Mm -hmm. You can utilize it as say uh, champagne. Right. Uh, you can do uh, um, uh, uh, the very common one that <laughs> I went off my head uh, that a lot of people do with the with the wire. Uh, it'll come to me. Mm -hmm. I'll come back. But okay. there's so many different uh, of the, the technique. I'm mm -hmm. more uh, of law of the Limoges type because as a painter, that experience comes to play. So I tend to print. Whether I'm making a piece abstract uh, uh, representation or just pure or non-objective abstract and things like that, so right. I uh, I do uh, stuff like that with with my jewelry. Um, the pieces are uh, and if people are wondering glass, what does she mean and stuff like that? I just mm -hmm. let me kind of touch a little bit on that. I work with powder glass, and what to do is I have pieces formed uh, from uh, metal from flat metal uh, mm -hmm. from the shape, the design, uh, like this one here, it's an enamel piece yeah, that, that I'm wearing. Yeah. This part is enamel, yeah. this part is just the metal uh, fabricated. Mm -hmm. So these pieces, I fabricate the metal first, the copper metal, and then I take it and sprinkle enamels on it, the powder glass, and then this piece will go inside a kill and it will fire at 1450 to 1500 degree it comes out the glass would have molt molten and fused together mm -hmm. and then you add more layers and then you fire again and you can develop the test if you see we start out with this one with the white opaque uh -huh. and then some yellows and it's got I some see. green and stuff so it takes multiple firing and uh -huh. once that's all done it's a lot of steps and stuff then it's all cleaned up and then it's fabricated. Then I, then I went ahead and fabricated together into this piece. So now mm. it's on these and then it becomes a wearable piece. Right, and right. So that's, that's when I started combining my uh, love of colors with metal. Unlike the one over here, mm. uh, it's more of a, a, a shield. This is just pure metal. There's no mm. glass on it. Uh -huh. It's just uh, hand. This is what we call full forming, and this is when you beat beat up the metal. Like, you know, there's no no life in it anymore. <laughs> yeah. So <There's> life. <laughs> this this is a way to relieve stress. Uh, you know, uh, uh, when 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 life gets stressful, you can come and you can take your metal, you can fold it, and you can start to beat it up. But beautiful thing comes out of it. So this, ah. this is <laughs> so this is just all metal uh, oh, okay. and, and stuff. So that's on the jewelry part. Now uh, on the mural, <clears throat> the mural, um, I was blessed to have been invited uh, by a friend of mine, Erin mm -hmm. uh, Maxwell Marconi, mm -hmm. and I might not say her last name correctly too. So that's okay. Uh, so forgive me, Erin. If I, uh, you know, mess up your name. Uh, so we were talking, this kind of started during the uh, George Floyd 
uh, incident. Right. Uh, I was doing a series of uh, piece, and this was one of the pieces that I did. You know, we all, as an artist, I consider myself, like I said, I'm multidisciplinary. So I might be uh, focused on being an abstract artist, but when there's a need for social justice mm -hmm. or social commentary, I feel the need because as artists, we're historians in some fashion. Right. Uh, and, you know, we, we record history in a however way we see it from mm -hmm. our viewpoint. And that's what history should be from the different viewpoints so that people can explore it and they can examine it down the line when we're no longer here. Right. So this was a piece that I did of the George Floyd uh, around that time. And this one here uh, was uh, Say My Name. And mm -hmm. it has pieces of uh, images of George in here. It, it's a, it was a mixed media mm -hmm. of, uh, of, of his uh, um, uh, in the star. And then mm -hmm. it's uh, along the uh, flag, it says Say My Name. And there's a reason why uh, I went with this rendition of course, this composition when I was doing that, mm -hmm. you know, being an, an American and being the way that it was treated, it was, you know, nothing less of saying maybe, you know, an American, you know, the human being when they, so I can really, you know, because I look at that scene of the, of the, uh, 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 the, the officer, the police on his neck, it's almost like how they used, used to slaughter uh, goat and 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 uh, uh, ram and stuff like that, where they held them down so that they're not moving before they slit their throat. You know. Mm. So uh, when I look at that, in, you know, and as mm -hmm. I was working on this, what that came to mind was using the flag because when you know uh, uh, someone die and give their their self up for the country, uh, like right. we recently lost a couple of those uh, young men that died in uh, Afghanistan. Right. The, the coffins is draped, you know, um, as its forms of respect and protection with the American flag. Right. But then, as you look at this, it's interesting how the colors and the flag, you have the white and the red and the blue. Right. You know, and I put its imagery in the blue stars, you know, because he's an angelic star right now, George Floyd, since, you know, it was taken away from us. Mm -hmm. But the blue signifies the authority of the police officer. Okay, the people in blue, mm -hmm. right? That's and right. how it is. And the red to me signifies, you know, the blood of Judge Floyd as, mm. uh, you know, uh, kind of, um, you know, exiting his body as it, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and saying his name. So I did a couple of those with the American flag uh, this one uh, that says, say my name, and then the other one says, I can't breathe. So at that time, I was had this series was showcasing. I was not even putting my regular paintings uh, in social media. It was what I was feeling. You know, we were just feeling the pandemic. And then on top of that, we were feeling that. And it was, so I did a series of um, pieces that reflect the mood and how I'm feeling at the time. And then uh, uh, my friend reached out to me and said that the, um, they're planning a mural for the city and uh, would I be interested? And she sent me some information to read about it. And I read about it and I, and I, I saw the, the uh, um, list of people that's gonna be in the mural. And mm -hmm. I said, well, now I said, wait up, Erin. I, I, I'm not a mosaic artist. I, I've mm -hmm. never worked with mosaic, you know. I've done mm -hmm. a lot of things. I'm also this <laughs> I've done a lot of things. Yeah. But mosaic, that's new to me. Yeah. And stuff like that. And uh, how would that happen? And she said, "Well, you know, don't worry about that. You know, I've always yeah. loved your work. You know, um, uh, you're a great artist, and everything will fall into place because I'll make sure that I, you know, uh, do a tutorial for you guys because we right. wanted to get all different." people artists involved and non-artists. And, and that's what's so cool about this mural. You right. have you have artists like myself that have mm -hmm. experience and then you have the upcoming artists or regular people like said, I'm not an artist and they, they managed to do the mural. So that goes to tell you that you can say I'm not an artist, but when you equip and you provide them with the right tools and the right things, it, then it, it changes. So she did, and it took uh, a while for the city to approve it. And once it's approved, we started the journey of creating 
Each one of the portraits were created in our own individual studio. Mm -hmm. And um, I created three portraits out of the 32 portraits in there. So that's about um, uh, uh, one out of the, you know, there's a total of about 14 artists in, in that participated. And uh -huh. most of us, uh, some of us did three, some did four, and some did one, but it all comes together. So the first one I did was of Dr. Maya Angelou. And, mm. uh, you know, and uh, I make sure that I personalize it I in, in, in a way, uh, adding my own voice to the piece after she gave us all the materials uh -huh. and as I was putting together. And if you look at that piece, it has still arise. So I try to look at every one of them, find something unique or something particular to put in there to, to, so that when someone looks at it and goes, oh yeah, I can remember that still arise. Oh. I mean, so well, that was that. Well, then let, let me ask you this. Sure. We, um, for those of us who I, and I, well, I guess you, I consider myself a writer. I do not, cons I, even though that is an artistry too, but I so love, um, you know, to, when I see artwork and see people, their creativeness. How would you encourage someone to get started? Brand new, they've never done anything, but they want to do something. Just would you say, take a class at a community college, or would you say, uh, go to the art store? And or, or what would you, what would you say to do to get started? It, it can be all of those. Okay. okay. So if the passion is there and they're willing to, one thing I'm going to say is be kind to yourself. Oh. We are our most strongest critics. Yep. If yeah. you're kind to yourself, yeah. the floodgate will open. If mm. you look at each piece and said, I am here to learn, this is not going to be a masterpiece, yeah. the floodgate will open. Mm. If you go in with open mind, it would happen. So first thing is be kind to yourself and allow yourself to receive. Because it's, you know, when mm -hmm. you start to paint and you start criticizing, oh, I really hit this line. Oh, I hit this out, this one, yeah. and stuff like that. You are not being kind to yourself. And you're going to see that you struggle and struggle more. But if you just said, oh, I'm just having fun. I don't care what happens. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And stuff like that. You mm -hmm. you know you already have that state of mind, and you're gonna enjoy. Yeah. And come what may, you already enjoyed the piece because you set that tone at the very beginning. So they can go to the store and get things. There are tons of YouTube tutorial mm -hmm. out there. If they if they're not ready to venture out to take classes at college, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. one way to start because then no one needs to see it, you know, and stuff. Mm -hmm. So the other thing is you can, if you feel like, oh, I just paid this for, don't invest in very expensive paper. Don't invest in, in very expensive paint, mm -hmm. you know, uh, at this time that you wanted to start with. Especially if you're not, if the confidence is not there so that you then you start to rationalize. I just wasted all this money that I don't have to go buy all this, thing. I like this you know, and stuff like that. So by you, you know, putting that in and, mm -hmm. and working on one, you ready to let go to the next one and to the next one and, and more. Because people ask, oh, I like you to take it to do that. And we artists generally, you know, this is a common thing that we talk amongst artists, like say, you right. know, 40 years, uh, 30 years, 20 <laughs> years, you know, someone, you know, yeah. I had an artist friend that said, uh, I'm afraid that people are going to look at my work and say it's so simple form because she's doing minimalism. And to do minimalism, it's not easy. But it's like that line, there has to be a purpose. Why is there? Why she put it there? And, stuff. and people are like, no. Do you, know, you, do you think everyone can do that line the way no. you did it? No. 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 It, it's the experiment that comes in. And if no. they think they're there, yeah, then your art is not for them. Because mm -hmm. what it took to get to that point, right? It's years of experience. So you're willing to go do that and go to college or take one-on-one -on -one classes 
or small classes in the uh, 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 local arts uh, mm -hmm. group. And so those are ways to get started. And yeah. just again, I'm going to go back to that number one, go with an open mind and be kind to yourself. Oh, thank you. I wanted to thank you for being on the show today, Ariola. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go get the paint out now. And, <laughs> and I'm going to give myself permission to be kind to myself and be okay. Be okay. Yeah, yeah be okay. Thank and, you for me. Oh, and, we need to and, see your piece. The yeah. piece behind you is, so, is so currently I'm on. Gonna, I'm going to tell people that if you're in Riverside, mm -hmm. please take your friends and family, especially if they come to visit. It's a pride of the city to go see the mural because the mural has a, a 32 well-known African-Americans from poets to uh, civil rights and things like that. There's history to be told. So you will enjoy visiting the mural and seeing those faces of people that it's part of our African-American history. Oh, and wow. I wanted to point out to the piece here, mm -hmm. uh, this is the piece that's on the show, the neighborhood, and the neighborhood will renew for another season. I saw so that. Yes. Opportunity for that piece to be on the show. This is a jicle of the piece. The original is on the show, but this is a jicle of the piece that's on the show that I have available for anyone that's interested in having a piece of that issue. And, right. and I put your website up. So those of you that would like to contact her, the website was up a minute ago. I'll put it up again so you can have a chance to contact. Thank you again. God bless oh, you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been <laughs> you wonderful will. afternoon. I, you know, I truly enjoyed, uh, you know, being here and I hope I shed some light into uh, my work and also to encourage those uh, budding artists out there that wants to take this plunge, you know, uh, just, right. just go for it and never, you no, know, be afraid and don't over criticize yourself and just let it, let, let it, let it come out, let the floodgate open and let it roll and you'll be right. surprised. And you can always send me a, a message, uh, 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 email, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if you wanted me to take a look at something that you did and things like that. Uh, All yes. right. Well, thank you again. Thank you. All right. Ladies, gentlemen, that is our show for today. We're a little bit over, not much, but still so much to learn from this beautiful, beautiful artist. Here is this lady giving, just pouring into us. Adiola is pouring into us and she is world renowned, ladies and gentlemen, world renowned. So we will see you in a week from today. Those of you on the email list or the texting list, you will get an email or text about um, who the next speaker will be or who the next special guest will be. And oh, here we go. We have uh, Susan said, thank you for the advice. And we have uh, Elaine said, awesome show. Thank you both. God bless each and every one of you. I can't wait to see you again next Monday. Take care, everybody.